Welcome to the Max 7 tutorial number 14, Computer Key to Musical Key. In tutorial 13, we had made this nice um, MIDI device that could play music right out of this K slider up here. Oops. And though um, it doesn't play very well, it does in fact play, but I wanted to address that in this tutorial exactly. Um, let's see, we can only play with the mouse right now, so let's see what it is that's coming out of this slider here. And what we're going to do is make um, a device that gets information from our computer keyboard and translates it as though it were a musical keyboard. And that will be both very handy, but handy for teaching you about parts of Max, new objects, um, the way data is uh, carried and everything else. So let's put a little um, message box here, just type M as I already did, and connect that to the right hand inlet. So it's just gonna show whatever's flying in there. I like to option click on things, copy it and move it right over there and do the same thing. And we'll lock our patcher and we'll just hit this bottom note. That's note number 36 out of 127 at velocity or volume 27 out of 127. And it, you may remember that if you move the pointer up the note up the key this way you can get a louder note. So if I click near the top it's still note 36 but the velocity has gone way up to 111. If I could get to 127 that would be as loud. I can't... Uh, 121, not bad. And uh, let's just for the sake of argument see what the top key is. There, It's key 83 and that's quietly at 36 and loud at 115, 121, 121. So um, what I'm thinking is that um, we could make our computer keyboard simulate this data so it can send out a pitch number and a velocity number. And then we could just use our computer keyboard to, well, play this keyboard, but also to play our um, our MIDI devices, any MIDI devices we might make. So that's what we're going to do today. So I'm going to unlock my patcher again. I'm going to take everything by saying uh, Command A here, and I'm just going to move it down to the bottom of the window to give myself lots of room. Of course, I want to see it. There it is. And then um, I'm thinking about this, which is velocity, um, and we need a volume knob for our input. Um, you know, a computer board, uh, the keys are not velocity sensitive, so we're just gonna have to set the volume, which we will do with a slider. So let's uh, go up here, type letter N, type slider, and get that slider up there. Make it nice and fat so you can look at it. Type the letter I underneath it. and lock your patcher and just make sure that it actually works. So we stick the pointer on there and run it right up to the top. You notice we get 127. Down at the bottom we get zero. Fantastic. We have a volume slider. Now we just have to figure out how to get the key input from the computer into here. And there is an object in Max for doing that. So unlock your patcher again, type an N, and just type the word key. The key object comes up here. Let's option click on it and get the help file in that lazy way that we normally do. We'll unlock the help file. Well, for the moment, let's steal this, um, th these useful instructions here. And we'll just grab everything from the key object to these things that tell you what these numbers are to these, which are nice number boxes. We'll just copy it all, close the window, 
delete that one and put a new one in here. Whoop, it's kind of over here. If you grab, if you're careful and make sure not to click on anything, you can just grab the whole bunch of them and drag them over here. So there's our key, and this tells you what each one of these is. Here is the ASCII value. I can never remember what ASCII stands for, but there it is. Platform specific key code. I think this is different on PCs, Macintoshes, and other devices, but with ASCII, they're all the same. Modifier keys, that's like shift, uh, caps lock, um, option key, things like that uh, show up here. Platform independent key code value. I just don't know. Things to learn. Okay, so let's um, lock our patcher here and just um, start, uh, let, let's just type the A. A is 97. Um, A is 97. S is 115. And D is 100. That's kind of tells you something right there that there's not any real specific order to this. So um, what we're going to have to do is individually find this number and then convert it to the numbers that we want for this. In other words, 36, 37, 38, 39, 40, etc. up to wherever we want to play on the keyboard. Um, since the ASCII keyboard isn't as big as this musical keyboard, what we'll do is we'll start here with key 48 and go up to maybe key 60 or so. And then we'll just um, put in something that allows us to, to move that whole keyboard up and down. So for the moment, we have this key, it comes down here, we get a 97 for A, and we're going to want to transfer translate that to a 48. And we're going to want to translate uh, an S, which is 115, to a 50. So um, we need a new object that does that. So we're going to unlock our patcher again, and type the letter N, type select, and then uh, do we remember the first one is 97? There we go, 97. Um, so what happens with select is when a number comes in to select, um, if, it, if this first outlet matches the number, and you can see when you mouse over it, it will bang if it matches a 97. So our idea is we're going to send a number in here, we're going to put a message here that is the number that we want, whoops, I'm going to lock my patcher in just 48, so I'm unlocking my patcher again, I'm typing 48 in there, okay, and then it's going to bang this message and we're going to figure out how to output it in a useful way that um, can be used down here to make a MIDI note. Okay, now here's the trick. We want to find out what the first octave of notes are. That should be 12 plus 1 because you're going to repeat do. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12 plus a full octave. 13 keys or so. But I can't remember all them at the same time. So I wanted to just quickly show you this little trick that I use just to get them in print so I can look at them. So I'm unlocking my patcher. Um, we used the prepend object before. And, or if we didn't already use it, I'll tell you what it is. Prepend takes any message coming through it and sticks whatever message is in the prepend box on the front of that message. So in this case, and there's also an append message that sticks whatever message is after append on the back of the message. In this case, we're going to use both words and we're going to say prepend append. Okay, and so when this 110 or whatever number comes out of here comes through this box and then goes into this message box
instead of acting in the usual way that things do with a message box, it's going to simply tack the next number coming through onto the back of that number. So let's, um, just going over that again. So the 109 comes through the prepend box and on the front of the 109, prepend sticks the append message. So the message coming out of here is append 109. That means stick it on the back of whatever your message is. So here we go with that as a trial. I'm gonna lock my patcher and type the A, which is 97. Now I'm gonna proceed up the keyboard in this sort of pattern. So I'm gonna to go to W for this one, S, and then up to E, to D, to F, to T, to G, to Y, to H, to U, to J, and then I'm not going to do I because there's no black note there. And I'm going to go to K to, I still got some more keys. I'm just going to keep going to O to L to P to, what is that? Semicolon. I think I'll stop there. All right. So I got. I captured all of these numbers and the nice thing about this is that if I now unlock it and select this, by the way, being very careful not to type any numbers while you're doing it, you can go in here and copy them all and even more strangely you can just go in the select box and if you highlight the 97 and then just paste it, you'll get that select box. So I'm going to move this over here just so you can look at it in case you're still trying to figure out how to do this. But now we have something that can translate all of these numbers that will come in into bangs that should be 48, 49, 50, 51, 52, 53, etc. It's a big pain in the neck. I'll be the first to admit it, but um, I don't know. Whoever came up with the musical keyboard or the computer keyboard, one of them is at fault. Who is it? I'm not sure. Um, so let's uh, option click on this 48, move it over here, and say, oh, you're going to be 49. But before I continue, it suddenly occurs to me, and I'll, I'll, I'll connect it just to make sure that this is all actually working. Let's just put a message down here and make sure it's working. So 48 here, 49 here. Heck, we could even um, connect them to to this keyboard. But uh, let's let's lock our patcher down and just see if it works. So here's A, and the 48 comes down, and here's W, and there's 49. So it's working so far. So let's unlock this. We'll get rid of that. So we're sure that it's working, but the one thing we wanted to be able to do later was to be able to shift it up and down some number of keys so that we could have a higher octave or a lower octave. So we're going to build right into our fabulous uh, key thingy um, the ability to do that. So let's type in here new and type plus space zero. And the reason I'm doing this now is that copying and pasting things is really easy in Max. Um, and so if, if I was to go through here and make each individual one of these and then have to do each individual one of these, it would take me a long time. But as it is, we could even erase this one for the moment. I'll show you what I, I'm going to do, which is I'm going to highlight both of them and option click on them and do it this way. So there, I've got four of them and um, maybe I should uh, just tidy them up a little bit so that actually we can make them smaller I believe and that way they won't, whoops, 
Well, I can't make them that much smaller, but uh, you can make them a little bit smaller and uh, lump them all together and you'll, you'll see why I do this momentarily. Um, because once I once you get them the way you want them, they're easy to copy and paste. So there's a set of four. And now I'm just going to copy and paste the whole group of them and option click on them and move them sideways there. That seems easy enough. And now we know that that's 4 times 3, 12. And then I'll just do it one more time. So there's 16 notes with their plus zeros. And we can go back in here and connect them. When it starts to be a pain in the neck to do this, you can always also grab this and stretch it out so that it's somewhat even with your with your number boxes. So I'm just going to go on connecting these. Boy. And we have two left, so that must be the semicolon there. So we actually must have managed to get 17 um, uh, numbers on here and uh, connect that last one. This very last one, um, if you hover over it, you'll see it says select input if the input doesn't match any of these numbers. So this one here is for 59. If it matches 59, it'll come out this outlet and we'll hover over it. Bang if input matches 59. This one, if whatever's coming in doesn't match any of those, it'll come out that outlet. So now we've got to go back in here and change every one of these numbers. Uh, that's 49, 50, 51, 52, and so on. I'm going to spare you the agony of watching me do this. Um, watching me do all of it. I'll do about half of them. There we go, up to 55. And then um, they're plus zero right now, so these numbers are just going to come right on out here. And then what we have to do is figure out how to group them with whatever our volume is. And, um, and then send it to this keyboard. So the, what we want to do is every time a number comes out of, is played by this, we want it to um, bang on this uh, to, to, to get the velocity number and then include the key number well, the new key number once it's translated down here. Um, that should be relatively easy, easy to do with the pack object. So we're going to go ahead and type the letter N and type pack. And in this time, it's going to be P-A-C-K, not to be confused with the pack object P-A-K, P-A-C-K space zero space zero. And so every time, um, now we have to do that thing where we uh, uh, use the shift knob here. So I'm going to, before I connect to this one, I'm going to hold the shift key down and just go bang, 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 all the way across here. So this will collect all those numbers coming out of there. And... I let off, whoops, keep my shift key down one more time. Now I let off the shift key, and there they all are. And then we would like this number to be stored in the right hand, um, in the right hand placeholder, what would you call it, register of pack. The number coming out here will set the pack off. As soon as this number is received, pack will send out whatever's inside it. What, whatever is received in this side doesn't do anything but the number will stay stored. That's good because you don't want it to play notes while you're turning the volume up and down. So let's see what's going on here. We'll turn the volume up and down. We'll turn it up to 65. Oops, 
before we do that let's put a message down here message and connect to the right hand inlet just so we can see what's going on I'll make it bigger if that helps and then lock your patcher and type a look at that 4865 that's good because we know that a is 48 and 65 is the volume so so far so good and then uh, I'm gonna type s hey it skipped to 50 that's because it's supposed to skip to 50 perfect and still at 65 let's change the volume good nothing happened there the volumes now 91 I'm gonna type a D and it says 52 and again that's good because the white keys should be uh, 48 50 and 52 or excuse me 48 50 and 52 and this was 51 and 53 and then they switch here so great it appears that it's working so far well that is a fantastic thing with one minor problem that I have not told you about I know it's shocking at this point and that is that um, we have a make note device down here that makes key off and that's um, that's fine but we want to be able to hold our keys on so we want to get, be able to get rid of this make note device and to do that we're going to want to know when you let up on the keys and I am going to show you that um, in just a second here first I'm going to get rid of some things that are in my way so um, we'll get rid of that and we'll get rid of that and now we're going to learn a new thing about Max and that is if you can highlight um, which is the the great thing about Max is that as I was saying when I was doing these you can duplicate stuff very quickly so once you have it all put together and working you can make another one so what I'm gonna do is highlight all of this stuff right here and I'm going to option click and drag it all over to here and you might wonder why uh, it doesn't matter that this goes off the side that we, we can see all the working parts of it because then what we're gonna do is come up here and edit this and say key up and now this key up will tell you when the key comes up and this key down will tell you when the key comes down and this pack amazingly will always send a zero out because that's what it's told to do this one will send out whatever numbers been replaced on this side so now all we have to do is connect this over to here and connect it to that message and let's see how we're doing here now and I'm gonna lock my patcher and let's push a again there's 4891 and now we're gonna let up 480 push down s 5091 let up 50 this is actually a pretty amazing feat in the in the world of programming um, and you've done it so oh, you know what I forgot to do was change these darn numbers here before I copied them so now I'll have to do it twice or will I I'll just throw this out later and copy it once I do these numbers correctly but for the time being I'll just use the lower numbers remember to finish your numbers before you duplicate this you never want to do work more work than you have to okay so uh, speaking of which now we're going to uh, connect that we're going to move this whoops unlock this and move it over and connect this directly to the case slider and lock our patcher and let's just see how it works for a minute there okay now try pushing down two notes okay now what's interesting is you could hear them but you couldn't see them because right now the K slider is not set up correctly for that so let's go over here and click on the 
on the uh, inspector. We'll unlock our patcher, click on the key slider, and we're going to find its mode over here, which is, oh, I love the zoom when it doesn't work. There it is. So you can see that over here the mode is set to monophonic. So what we're going to do is click here, click, and go to polyphonic. Okay, and I'm just going to zoom right on back out there. So now, if we lock our patcher down, and you hold two keys down, and when you let one key up, well, you should be able to see it. Um, oh, I see why. I forgot to connect this pack object to the... Oh, unlock your patcher and connect this one also to the case slider. Sorry. My bad. Connect that right up there. And now, lock your patcher. And now, we will... Look at that. So now you can play two notes at a time. Let one up. And it turns off as it should. And these are now... fantastic okay so now we can actually come down here and take away um, the make note object just delete it and we can connect this output to this pack object and this output to the right hand side of the pack object and now we should be in full control full control of the MIDI input here. So let's hear it. Listen to that. It just stays on. Hey, we could turn the volume up if we wanted to. Beautiful, beautiful. Well, that is fantastic. In the next video, I'll show you how to neaten all this up, but that was a long and uh, wonderful exercise there, so thanks for hanging in there, and I will see you in the next tutorial.